The presidency yesterday reacted to an open letter written by former President Olusegun Obasanjo on New Year Day, in which he said that Nigeria has performed poorly under President Muhammad Buhari in the last seven and a half years, saying the ex-president uh, ex had no moral right to push such uncommon position. Presidential spokesman Garbashe accused Obasanjo of being jealous because Buhari is ahead of him in terms of national development. Shehu said Obasanjo does not possess the moral credibility to criticize the Buhari administration. In an open letter, Obasanjo said that Buhari is faced with, uh, Nigeria is faced with several challenges buoyed by rudderless leadership and bad economic policies. He says Peter Abiy has an edge over the other candidates for the nation's top job. He said his decision came after several interactions with major contenders, but the ruling All Progressive Congress says Obasanjo's endorsement is a worthless political move with no electoral value. The African Action Congress, Fragria Omaele Shore, called Obasanjo's endorsement an endorsement of failure. Meanwhile, River State Governor Mr. Yinson Wiki has said Sunday's endorsement of the Labour Party presidential candidate Mr. Peter Obi by former President Tulisha Gombasanjo speaks volumes about the character of his former vice and current presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Elijah Atiku Abaka uh, Wiki called Atiku a bad product. I work with somebody for you work under somebody. The person has recommended Nigeria as another person. Is it me? You don't call it a recommendation. I work with somebody for eight years. And we're using it as a campaign that when we're in office, we did well. Then my boss is recommending another person not to be there, something for the rest of the world. Am I the one? No, sir. Am I the one? No, sir. So why me? Am I the boss? We only made a recommendation for that person. We are only a boss who recommended another person other than you. Are and I was going to the boss who thought she didn't say anything when I had when I saw the letter last night. I was I was touched. <laughs> if your principal. I'm not remind you. There's something for the mentally. Oh. Not from people want to see your principal, they'll not be able to recommend you. It took your principal a long time. You now wrote to the letter to all Nigerians. So I'm, I'm not too comfortable. Uh, I mean, I'm not one of them because I didn't work with you, I work with you. Let's talk about Ayo. Good to see you. Happy New Year. First of all, I was going to say good to see you and Happy <laughs> New Year. Great to have you back. Good to see you. A lot of the way for you to um, come in on the on the New Year's Day. Um, oh, yesterday oh, oh. we discussed um, pres former President Lucien Mwabasa and just love letter to Nigerians, particularly speaking to the young people in Nigeria and the international community, where he highlighted some of the things or detailed some of the things that Nigerian young people should be watching out for next year. A chief of which was very popular was the fact that he said no one should come to the presidency or to to the race with the tagline Emilio Kon or um, I have paid my dues. Obviously referring to Ashiwaju Bola Metinubu for the latter and uh, Waziri Atiku Abubaka for the for the sorry um, Ashiwaju Bola Metinubu for the former and uh, Atiku Abubaka for the latter. Now he said that it is Enyiloko means that it's the time of the young people. And then he said, which is what has ruffled the feathers of the presidency, that uh, Niger he using the aphorism that it's like hell on earth for many Nigerians today, and that the, it was like Nigerians went from from frying pan to fire under the president uh, Muhammad Buhari's tenure. Uh, yesterday, uh, Dr. Bati had made a call and said that perhaps they were still enjoying the New Year festivities. Hence why Malam Gaba Shehu and Mr. Femi Adishino, spokespersons of the president, hadn't, president hadn't come out to say anything. Well, they haven't disappointed you, Doctor. They've come out now Ooh. to um, give their views and they didn't, in a four-point letter, just summarizing, one of the key things they said was that they felt that the president, um, former president, was jealous of the successes recorded by uh, President Muhammad Buhari, which he himself could not boast of. They also talked about, you know, drew attention to the fact that during his time, he wasn't transparent, corruption was recorded under him, making reference to the Auscon deal. Um, they also said that um, the president had ousted democratically elected governors, um, citing Rashidi Ladoja of your state, 
Peter Obi of, um, at the time, Anambra State, Chris Ngege, Ayofayo Shea, and the likes. Now, let me just focus on the, the bone of contention here. The former president's assessment of President Buhari's tenure, summarizing it saying that Nigerians are suffering more now than they were before. So let's look at the merit of his statement. And perhaps this is a good question for Nigerians to answer because you are the focus of these debates or this conversation. How have we fared under this administration? Is life better for Nigerians today? Is life easier for Nigerians today? What is the purchasing power of the average Nigerian today? I'll just take a look at the economy because oftentimes the economy is a good place to judge the tenure of the leader of a nation. Because if people are poor, if people are not able to eat, if the economy is suffering, then really and truly we can't even begin to speak about other things in the nation. So let me leave other things and just do a quick um, run through as to what or how we are faring economically under the current tenure. So as of today, if we look at the exchange rate, President Muhammad Buhari inherited an exchange rate of 197 naira um, to the dollar. Today, at least as we speak on the, on the formal market, it is $448 um, naira to a dollar. On the parallel market, uh, that's in, in, the, in the black market, I can't even, I mean, it's about 700 or so. So that is up there. We look at the rate of inflation, we look at our public debt. This has been a topic of conversation in the past few months and, and, and years under this administration. We are currently over $100 billion as in terms of our public debt in Nigeria. If you look at the inflation rate under this um, and, and the average GDP rate, it is said that the current administration has the worst GDP growth rate since 1999 at 1.1%. We look at even, I mean, just looking at how Nigerians and what Nigerians have been able to buy food. The last time we could buy a bag of rice for under, under 10,000 naira was during President Olusha Gombas on just tenure. So it's quite difficult to not take, you know, not give merit to what he said as to the reality of the conditions of Nigerians, except perhaps leadership is disconnected from the average Nigerian or perhaps leadership is disconnected from the realities of what we face in Nigeria. And so perhaps we shouldn't say jealousy because if you compare the state of the economy under President Olusha Mwabasanjo and now under President Muhammad Buhari, the person who should be jealous really should be President Muhammad Buhari in terms of how well he handled the economy compared to what they've done now. And moving on to um, Yasun Wike, um, Governor Yasun Wike of River State and his statement, someone said earlier on that he has become a Comment a public um, commentator. So he's now commenting on many things. But I'll leave what he said because I'm sure that Dr. Anufai will speak to that and just focus on something, perhaps a silent message in all he's speaking. A number of times that he has spoken out, he's done made this comment when he was commissioning infrastructure, a capital project, and that speaks volumes. So despite hate him or love him, one of the things that we must say is that he is leaving a legacy in River State of building cap, um, infrastructure. Um, at the latest comments he made when he was um, flagging of the Adpabu Odido Road in, 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 in River State. And this is instructive because at the end of the day, the first his first duty is not to comment um, on happenings or present, former President Obama Sanjo's letter. It is his service to the people. He's, what he's living, what he's doing as governor, not leaving his duties, even though he wants to tackle you know, internal wrangling, wranglings within the PDP. And for that, I must say kudos. Dr. Vati, happy new okay. year to you. Let me start. Yes, happy new year. Let me start with uh, Wiki. Well, Wiki provides uh, very good content for the newspapers, for media outlets. <laughs> so he gets reported all the time when he makes comments. And it's uh, properly within his right to express an opinion. So on national issues, from his vantage position as governor of River State. Yesterday, he, uh, he was speaking at the flag off ceremony of a road to be constructed in Emoha, uh, local government area. And he took time out to comment on what President Olusha Gombasan just said about uh, Peter Obi. And he expressed surprise that uh, Atiku Abubakar's former boss is not endorsing him this time around. Well, he's entitled to his opinion. It's perfectly within his rights to express an opinion on national issues. But I hope he realizes that uh, 
when he leaves that office in May, what the people will remember and not his uh, quarrel with uh, the PDP or the uh, chairman of the PDP or with Atiku Abubakar or his private uh, political uh, uh, issues. What the people will remember are his achievements in River State. So it's good that uh, while fighting politics at the national level and the local level, he's focusing also on leaving a legacy behind uh, in River State. He also must realize that by June, no newspaper will report him again, except he goes uh, you know, on the streets of uh, Abuja and he's, he goes to dance at the, uh, at the square. Otherwise, you know, he will, he will have expired in terms of uh, news uh, value, you know, and the media will move on. But for now, it provides uh, very good material. And while it lasts, you know, uh, that is fine. I saw his quarrel with uh, Atiku Abubakar. Well, it's in the uh, nature of politics for people to ag disagree. Maybe they will disagree, they will agree later. That remains to be seen. But to come to uh, the response uh, from the federal government to uh, President Olusha Gunbasanjo's assessment of the uh, of the uh, Buhari administration. Well, President Obasanjo says Buhari has taken Nigeria from the mountain top to the valley. That he has taken Nigeria from frying pan to fire. In other words, he's not uh, you know uh, impressed by uh, President Buhari's uh, performance. The same President Buhari that he endorsed in 2015 when he condemned the Jonathan administration. Now, eight years down the line, the same President Obasanjo says, Buhari is not good enough. And he thinks someone else has an edge, uh, you know, for the future. Well, I'm sure that a man who has acquired uh, a reputation as a letterman would not expect under any circumstance that if you write a letter to Nigerians, you will not get responses. And you can see the statement that he put out there about the 2023 presidential election has generated quite a number of reactions, including Professor Bola Giacchiemi saying that, in fact, Obasanjo is part of the foundation of the problems of Nigeria. That was one reaction. You've seen uh, 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 Wiki in the reverse reacting. The PDP has reacted. The APC has also reacted. But the missing link uh, in what I would say is not the surprising response from Garuba Show and the presidency is that, look, I expected that Garuba Show will have used the opportunity of that uh, rejoinder to President Ulusha Gombasunjo to debunk the allegation that Buhari has taken Nigerians from frying pan to fire. And all he needed to do, you know, as uh, the uh, administration continues to wind down, having just 22 weeks. Or maybe it will do a follow-up piece on this, or maybe Femi Additional will do it. Is to just outline for public consumption uh, how the Buhari administration has moved the country forward. And they are, I'm sure they have material, you know, in-house that they can put together and say, well, you are, you are wrong. These are the alternative facts. Buhari has done this. In terms of legal reform, Buhari has built, made progress with Second Niger Bridge. Buhari has built this infrastructure. Buhari, and then maybe you compare it with what you imagine or assume that Obasanjo did in his own time. Uh, but to uh, write a piece and say Obasanjo is morally dirty, Obasanjo violated Nigerian democracy, uh, Obasanjo is uh, just jealous, uh, his uh, statement is about selfishness. No. Whoever wrote that piece, well, I, I hope uh, Garo Bashe who wrote it himself, was not paying enough attention because this will have been a robust opportunity you know, to document what to consider the achievements of the uh, administration. And Garo Bashe in that statement was saying, oh, hell for Obasanjo means he cannot dictate to whoever is uh, president. Well, I'm sure that uh, President Obasanjo himself will be thoroughly amused because I'm sure he didn't expect that he would put out a letter like that, a statement like that, and not expect reactions. So you'll be amused. You'll say, well, they are abusing me. They are saying I'm this, I'm that. Then let them tell us what they have done. So I think uh, the response from the presidency is a missed opportunity. 
and I recommend a follow-up statement, which will say, well, President Buhari did not impose hell on earth on Nigerians. These are the things that he has done. There's another line in uh, uh, Garuba Show's uh, response, in which he was quoting President Joe Biden. He said President Joe Biden only recently commended uh, uh, President uh, Buhari for being a top Democrat, a man who is committed to the cause of democracy uh, in Africa. Well, I guess at the end of the day, it's not President Biden's endorsement that President uh, Buhari needs. It is the endorsement of the people of Nigeria. The people of Nigeria are saying, oh, this is what we think about the Buhari administration. But, you know, with the achievement about democracy that uh, Garubashi quoted in that response to President Obasanjo, President Buhari has an opportunity in February, March, to prove that indeed he has earned that commendation from President Joe Biden by giving Nigerians a smooth, credible, fair electoral process in February and March and ensure a smooth transition. As to the assessment of his uh, administration, I'm sure next year, the year after, five years down the line, we'll still be on that subject, no doubt. <clears throat> Yes, Dr. Abati, legacy is what you make it. I think it's also Ralph Waldo Emerson that said, what you do speak so loud I can't hear what you say. So let's look at what the Buhari administration have done. We've not seen it. Yeah, they say they did infrastructure. But should we start shooting at the infrastructure? The airport terminal, $100 million of our money used to build. Structural defect can be used over six months now. Do you know that's our hard-earned money that we have to pay back in debt? Go to dmo.gov.ng. Mountain debt. Ways and means. We don't even know what they did with ways and means. That's, that's the funny part. And now, this same government that tries to securitize ways and means by breaking its own CBN Act. $22 trillion. We can't account for the money. You know, they say, Uncle Boros, what did we do? We shot borders led to inflation. And please, they should stop making this argument that, oh, it was because of COVID inflation. Nigeria was growing less than 3% before COVID. Stop, let's stop lying to ourselves. Because we've blamed COVID now, we've brain Ukrainian war. Saudi Arabia is producing oil just like us. Saudi Arabia inflation rate is about 2.29%. So who are we deceiving? This is Mabasojo they are abusing. That is je jealous of Buhari. The only time Nigeria has grown double digits was in 2002 when Nigeria grew 15%. Should we check the economic growth of President Buhari? Minus, minus 1.8, minus this, recession, two recessions. Should we go on? Forex rate bastardized. And people keep saying, yeah, he did uh, infrastructure. Kaduna Rail Line, you remember what happened? Amici came out and they were supposed to put in the security surveillance infrastructure there till date, it's not been done. Yes, he's done some other infrastructure. I give him kudos for that. But let's stop talking as if the president used his own pocket money to do infrastructure. It's our commonwealth that was used to build Second Niger Bridge. It's the same Nigeria's money. The very first time Nigeria is making so, ought to be making so much from crude oil. This is the only time wars have not favored Nigeria. Yom Kippur in 73, go and check the records. Crude oil price rose from $3 per barrel to $12 per barrel. Favored Nigeria. The country was so bleeding rich that Yakubu Gowan came out to say the problem is not money but how to spend it. Most of the infrastructure you see in Lagos was built by Gowan then. You remember the cement Amada? We had so much cement, built lots of bridges and everything. Third Milan Bridge started then. But now, because of crude oil theft, we can't even take stock of what we have. So when you look at it, I ask you Nigerians, is your life better than it was eight years ago? Your answer is obvious. So if the presidency comes out to say that what Olusha Gwabasujo did right is not correct, I think the presidency should introspect. And maybe they should take out a survey and feel how Nigerians are feeling. Because I'm not sure, for them to say that, I'm not sure they feel the pause of Nigerians. In case you didn't get the memo, Nigerians are suffering. And let me tell you, the greatest endorsement any man can get is from his wife that has married him for so many years. President Buhari's wife came out on the, I think it was reported around October, she grant, I think the BBC had an interview where she apologized for the failures of the administration. 
this was the, this was the same President Buhari's wife that imprisoned a young boy. You know, we can go on and on. And for Mr. Wiki, he's just playing politics. It tilts in his favor today. His adversary here, Atiku Abubakar, is having a bad time because he was not endorsed by uh, President Lucia Govasuja, his former boss. And guess what happens? He lashes on that politically. But time will tell. But most importantly, Nigerians, what we're concerned about should be the issues that affect you. Paying heavy subsidies, subsidies that were campaigned that they will be removed. We first called it under recovery. Now that's taking a huge chunk of a fortune of our budget. Despite subsidies, we are still buying fuel at over 236 naira. Where, where should we start from? We just want things to work for the country.